we're back again and we're talking about a tracked vehicle today, a really peculiar one. Um, before I get into today's video, let me know what your favourite tracked vehicle is. I'd love to know whether it's an APC, a tank, let me know in the comment section below. So just imagine you're in the icy wilderness of the Arctic, snowstorms are raging, temperatures are plummeting to minus 50 degrees Celsius and you're the only thing standing between your base and incoming missiles and this absolute beast of a machine, the Tor M2DT, is all that's there to protect you. Russia's Arctic Warrior isn't just any missile system. It's a game-changing, all-terrain, cold-weather specialist with some serious firepower. And today we're diving into this cutting-edge tech with jaw-dropping capabilities and battlefield history of this complete polar powerhouse. The Tor M2D2 is a Russian-designed short-range air defense missile system potentially going into a long-range air defense missile system, incorporating the Tor M2 missile launcher station. It's specifically engineered for operations in Arctic regions and is built on the DT-30PM, articulated tracked all-terrain vehicle chassis. And what a behemoth this thing is. It is absolutely massive in its logistical configuration. It's even more beastly. I mean, the amount of stuff this thing can hold inside of it is just baffling and its capability to go just about anywhere particularly in the arctic is very impressive the second module on the back as you can see carries the tor m2 missile launcher station developed by russia's and i'm going to try my best to say this i know all the russians i apologize for ruining your language by russia's jsc eveshk electromechanical plant kopal a subsidiary of the almaz ante concern the system reflects russia's emphasis on arctic specific military capabilities and air defense as you can see with the tor m2 dt in february 2017 techno oh, i'm so bad at this a russian defense contractor announced that it was finalizing a prototype transport loader for this arctic adaptation of the tor nato reporting name SA-15 Gauntlet, and that's actually a pretty cool NATO reporting name of all of them out there. It's certainly not the uh, faggot level of uh, naming, but I think it's uh, pretty impressive to call it something like the Gauntlet. You certainly don't want to be in the environment where someone says, hey, SA-15 Gauntlet is in the area. Yeah, you don't want to be flying through there. Now, this is a fairly new platform that's been deployed, not in its design. And according to Russian sources, the Arctic version of the TOR system is intended purely to defend polar military bases being established across the Russian Arctic, spanning from Franz Josef Land to Chukotokta. I'm, I'm sure I didn't say that correctly either. The vehicle was first unveiled during a rehearsal for Russia's Victory Day Parade in April 2017. Its operational deployments were later showcased on December 13th, 2022, when the Russian Ministry of Defense released a video demonstrating the system in use in Ukraine. On February 1st, 2023, Ukrainian forces released a video apparently showing the destruction of a Tor m tt with the American-made M982 Excalibur GPS guided artillery munition, and it basically took it to pieces. The DT-30 PMT-1 chassis provides the Tor M2DT with all-terrain capabilities and an extremely good one at that, allowing it to remain operational in temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees celsius that is extremely cold even for a canadian i think the most i've experienced is about minus 46. its design is optimized for harsh conditions of the arctic and the extreme north enabling it to traverse water obstacles cross ditches and negotiate challenging terrain including ice obstacles while it excels in off-road performance its maximum road speed is limited to 45 kilometers an hour when you have a vehicle of this size you would probably expect it to Powered by an 800 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, the DT-30 PM chassis is amphibious and it is believed to share the same capability as being amphibious as the track carrier, but it's hard to say. Um, I've not really seen any footage or pictures of this particular platform in the water, but it's proposed that it could be and it, you'd think if it's going into an Arctic environment it would need to, particularly if it's crossing across icy terrain, because if that ice breaks and you fall into the water, that's a very expensive asset. Uh, to be dropping off in the water there. Each unit consists of two track modules. The first is designated for crew operations and fire controlling with a crew of three, while the second houses the radar equipment and two missile launch modules, each capable of firing four 9M331 or 9M332 surface-to-air missiles. The system's radar technology is actually pretty advanced, featuring a 25 to 30 km range for target detection and a 15 km tracking range for frontal arc of the turret. The radar provides 360 degree coverage and the FLIR tracker ensures effectiveness in high electronic countermeasure environments. 
The onboard fire control computer can autonomously monitor the airspace, process 48 targets simultaneously, which is a lot of targets, and engage up to four threats at once. The system autonomously identifies targets using a friend or foe technology and responds within seconds. This is particularly useful for engaging drones and high visibility targets, but also for those that are very difficult to see. This capability was demonstrated during the initial tests at the Kapsun Yar rocket launch and development site in the Ashkan region, where over 30 successful launches were conducted. The vehicle employs a vertical cold launch system to deploy the missiles, which utilize thrust vectoring jets mounted on the nose for exceptional maneuverability. Basically a pop and throw level of missiles that is actually kind of launching them not directly from the tube, but popping them out enough to get their main booster and firing off into the distance. It's quite an impressive system once you see it firing. It traces its original background to the Soviet Union's 1980s development of the 9K330, which was designed as a countermeasure to the United States' increasing deployment of cruise missiles. While it is capable of engaging aircraft, its system is really optimized for anti-cruise missile operations and serves as a ballistic missile defense system at battalion level, operating both manual and automatic modes. The articulated DT-30PM chassis, which you can see here, contributes to the excellent performance, particularly on soft ground and uneven terrain. The modular design of this system, though, offers significant flexibility. For instance, integrating a trailer-based missile storage system enables the deployment of additional ready-to-launch missiles without excessively increasing the system's overall weight and size. This modular approach also lends itself to naval or shelterized adaptations, and on naval platforms, compact and dense missile storage could enhance ship's air defense capabilities without requiring major structural remodifications. Similarly, shelterized versions could also be deployed around sensitive installations such as airfields using interconnected trailers strategically placed along the perimeter. For example, a system positioned near an airfield or a control tower with trailers dispersed around 3 or 5 kilometers in a perimeter could efficiently and rapidly engage those threats. The adoption of containerized missile storage introduces a revolutionary logistical advantage. Levering the standardized dimensions of the shipping containers, the Tor MDTT system could seamlessly integrate into a global shipping infrastructure, utilizing cranes and container ships for transport and deployment. A single 40-foot container adapted for this vehicle could potentially house up to 200 missiles, deploying via local radar systems. These containerized systems could also be positioned on small cargo vessels or at critical sites to ensure rapid response capabilities. The vehicle has been adopted in limited numbers by Russian forces, though, for Arctic operations, with 12 units confirmed to have been delivered. But it is interesting to know that Russia's Arctic militarization extends beyond the Tor M2DT. For example, the BAL reporting name SSC-6 coastal missile system designated primarily to target surface ships is also capable of engaging land targets, was relocated to the Shredny Peninsula near the Barents Sea. Live fire exercises with the BAL system were anticipated as part of the Northern Fleet training program in the fall. Following the collapse of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces or INF Treaty, which had prohibited the deployment of land-based missiles with ranges of 500 to 5,000 kilometers, Russia has ramped up its Arctic deployments. The future trajectory of Russia's Arctic arsenal remains uncertain, but continued Western military activity in the region may prompt the expansion of Russian air defense and offensive capabilities. Potential additions include the MiG-31K jets armed with the KH-47M2 hypersonic ballistic missiles to complement the existing MiG-31BM interceptors. Russia's air defense strategy really does, though, employ a massive layered approach. I've talked about many different platforms on my channel, and this is one of the heavy-duty ones. Systems like the Igla S and the Verba manpads provide coverage against drones and small targets primarily, however, a lot of people forget there's the multifunctional anti-tank guided missiles such as the Vik the Cornet and the newer Bullet missile, which offer dual capabilities for air and ground threats. Emerging threats like the LMURS a vertical launch missile with optical look-on functionality further expands Russia's defensive arsenal. This vehicle, however, is not without its flaws. It guzzles gas like crazy, and to support these vehicles you need quite a bit of logistics. The mere fact that the vehicle is running on a running gear that is not only tracks that are rubber, which can be quite difficult to replace, but the wheels themselves are actually rubberized too. They're not like normal tank treads that you would have with a running gear and road wheels. Uh, I've actually operated with the BV206, which is obviously Sweden's beautiful BAE systems derivative of this kind of system, although this one is completely on steroids and has an anti-aircraft missile system attached to it. But the running gear is quite easy to swap out and to maintain. It's also quite lightweight. 
when you start breaking off wheels on these vehicles in the Arctic, it's going to be a challenge for you to repair them, and it's going to be a bit of a maintenance nightmare to overhaul and fix these units, but in typical Russian ingenuity, I'm sure they'd find a way to logistically or mechanically fix up these things and get them going again, but it is something to consider. So what have we learned about this vehicle? Well, it isn't just a missile system. It truly is a masterpiece of Arctic engineering and the ability for it to go just about anywhere is something that's really a testament to its character of what it needs to do. With this dual module chassis, it's built to conquer the harshest terrains while its radar and missile tech really can take out threats faster than you can say polar bears. And let's not forget the modular and potential containerized designs that they've considered, making it a versatile system for naval and land applications without the need for, you know, having a standalone system. Whether it's defending the Arctic bases or starring in its own high-stakes showdown in Ukraine, this vehicle really does prove to be deadly as it is adaptable. Although there's no true deployments or engagements in, of course, the Arctic, I'm sure you would not want to be in the airspace around these particular weapon systems. Now, Russia may have only deployed a handful of these so far, but they've made quite the impact, literally. There's a lot of heads turning to the Arctic and thinking, okay, we've got to think about how we're going to tackle these kind of systems. And with the way the Arctic is heating up politically and in its own geographical setup, this is just the beginning for vehicles like the Tor M2DT. But what do you think? Does this Arctic beast set the standard of future defense systems and air defense? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for sticking with me for this icy adventure. If you loved learning about the Tor M2DT as much as I did, make sure you hit the like button and share this video with your fellow military tech enthusiasts. Don't forget, of course, to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Click that bell, guys. It really helps me get more deep dives into the coolest and most powerful machine shaping modern warfare and sharing it to you. Without you clicking that bell, you're not going to probably be notified because my channel, for some reason, is really struggling. I think a big part of it is just down to competition, which is great. I'm loving seeing other channels out there, but it is just me, little old me doing this, so if you'd be willing to leave me a comment and a like, it would mean the world to me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.